Welcome to episode 20 of the Hunted Backcountry podcast presented by Exo Mountain Gear. First off, guys, I want to thank you so much for entering the Exo Mountain Gear giveaway over the past few weeks. The lucky winner, if you haven't seen already, was Samuel W. He's up in Washington State and he now has a Exo Mountain Gear 5500 and Multicam headed his way. So thank you again, everyone, for participating. Be sure to stay tuned to um, this podcast as well as Exo Mountain Gear and the newsletter and things like that because we will have more giveaways coming soon. Here in the first week of the new year, Steve and I are headed to Rubyville, Kentucky for the ATA show, the Archery Trade Association show, which is where all of the new great things in terms of the bow hunting and target archery world come out. So be sure and follow us on Instagram. Um, our account is at Hunt Backcountry. And we'll be sharing some of the cool gear um, that we're going to see at ATA show, covering everything from new bows and accessories to uh, gear such as First Light and kind of covers the gamut. If you want to see anything specific, be sure and drop us a line um, either on Instagram or shoot us an email to podcast at xmountgear.com. We'll do our best to grab some photos of what you guys want to see. All right, on to this week's episode with Dan Staten. Dan uh, is formerly with Train to Hunt organization. He's now on his own and operating his own CrossFit gym, as well as running ElkShape.com and still produces some awesome hunting footage on YouTube and places like that. Dan is an absolute wealth of knowledge when it comes to training and nutrition. And nutrition is what we talk about in this episode. Uh, something that's important not only for hunting, which we talk about, but just in terms of being a healthy um, capable athlete on the day-to-day basis, in season, out of season. Yes, it's going to help you hunt, but it's also just in general going to help you live a better life. There's a lot of hype out there about nutrition, a lot of dogma. Um, we just kind of want to cut the crap and have a real simple conversation about improving our nutrition. Um, maybe if we have decent uh, nutrition already, maybe how we can step up our game. But it's a great time with this new year. You know, so many of us think about getting in shape. And more than um, exercise, nutrition plays a vital role. You just can't outwork a crappy diet. So we talk about nutrition and really just try and get to something that's really simple and straightforward and bring some good advice that we can all gain some knowledge from. So hope you enjoy this show. Thanks for tuning in. The Hunt Pack Country Podcast is proudly brought to you by Exo Mountain Gear, makers of ultralight, ultra tough packs that are designed to do what you love most hunt the backcountry. Exo packs are designed for efficiency, simplicity, and durability that's backed by a lifetime warranty. To learn more about Exo Mountain Gear, please visit www.exomountaingear.com. Cool. Well, Dan, welcome to the show, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, man. Thanks for joining us. You, uh, we're glad to hear from some of your experience and expertise for sure. So here we are. We're recording post Christmas, but pre New Year's, and it'll be 2016 by the time this baby rolls out. So it's kind of a cool time to talk, uh, you know, nutrition and fitness and training and things like that. Uh, we were just talking before the show. You have a gym and you're preparing for the influx of people, right? Yeah, definitely. Although we don't get like, you know, it's a CrossFit gym. So I think people understand there's a high degree of commitment and, uh, you know, CrossFit is, I think it's pretty well known now that it's really hard. So yeah. we get, we usually get the right customers walking through the door this time of year. Yeah. That's awesome. Cool. Steve, how you doing, man? Uh, I'm good. Just, um, back to the grind. Just got home yesterday from Christmas break and Back to work, a few more days, New Year's, and man, now it's 2016. It's crazy how time flies. Yeah, for sure. Well, cool. Again, talking about New Year's, uh, an interesting time to talk about uh, these topics with you, Dan. Can you go ahead and give us uh, some of your background? Um, You know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there on, you know, talking fitness, talking nutrition, even these days specifically in the hunting industry, there's people talking about these things, but, um, you certainly have some legit experience and knowledge to back things up. Can you kind of give us your background and education and things like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so gosh, I think I've been in the fitness industry for about 15 years. I don't want to age myself, but, uh, right out of high school, I became a personal trainer and, 
put myself put myself through school, undergrad and graduate, both uh, exercise science, exercise phys, and kind of traveled uh, across the U.S. doing some interns at some key locations, gaining some pretty uh, valuable experience training professional and collegiate athletes. One place was in Arizona at Athletes Performance in 2005, and then I went over to New Jersey and trained at Paris C Speed Schools, and I kind of around that time found CrossFit and got really into that, and so I went and got CrossFit certified. Uh, actually, it's called Level 1 Seminar, Level 2 Seminar for CrossFit, and I've pursued continued education in gymnastics, kettlebell, weightlifting through um, several different organizations and blah, blah, blah. Bottom line is I love fitness. Uh, I love helping people. And, um, that's kind of all my background tied into one. Yeah. That's awesome. It's cool to see, you know, to see your stuff, you know, you post on Instagram and all like that. It's, I mean, it's certainly inspiring and you certainly, um, walk the walk and not just talk the talk in terms of the ways that you're pushing yourself. And you can tell that, you know, you're hitting it hard and not just telling people what to do, but you know, you're following your own advice and taking your own medicine, if you will. I appreciate that. So before we get into training, um, let's talk a bit about nutrition and diet. You know, we, um, as hunters probably all say we need to get in better shape. And again, there's a big focus on training. That's absolutely great. But you know, I've from the experience myself, um, where you just, you know, you can't outwork a crappy diet. And then even things like, you know, hunters and even us on this podcast, will talk about really lightweight gear and things like that. But it's like, oh, how many extra pounds are we carrying? Not on our pack frame, but on our body frame. And obviously a key to getting in shape is going to be, uh, nutrition for sure. And so, do you, from your perspective, without opening a giant can of worms, what is your um, nutrition philosophy and the advice for the people that you are coaching and training with? And we're not necessarily talking about, you know, super athletes and competitive level athletes at this point, but just the guys who are trying to get in shape, who want to perform well for the mountains. What's your general nutrition philosophy? Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a tough That's a big question. question. I know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> just, just stop me when I digress because I'm sure I will. Uh, Nutrition is probably not the sexiest topic. Honestly, for, for most people, they want to ask me first like what lifts I do or what supplements I take. Rarely do I get a question about, well, what does your nutrition look like, which it should be the first question. It should be the first thing addressed. And, you know, even on hunting trips, like it's almost like the last thing that gets overlooked when you're like planning your pack and all your gear. You don't think about a grocery shopping list for a 10 day hunt. And I think we all could probably agree it should be a higher priority because it is fuel. Um, a couple things I preach is that, you know, anybody that I coach, I want them to not diet. I want them to eat. I don't want them to exercise. I want them to train. And I believe there's a difference. And for, for us at, at CrossFitters, you know, nutrition is going to play a larger role. I have most of my athletes for an hour a day. What they do the other 23 hours pretty much dictates the kind of results they see as well as how fast they recover between workouts. Um, so to make nutrition exciting, I think if you are concerned about performance you need to think about how you eat for performance if you're concerned about aesthetics which i know everybody has some concern about how they look because it dictates how they feel about themselves you need to look at nutrition um we as hunters are really fortunate that we hunt for our food and that plays a large role in, in kind of being a nerd about your nutrition and where you get your protein from um, one thing I read um, on a CrossFit journal a long, long time ago, like 2004, was um, the, the, the founder, Greg Glassman, wrote, uh, eat meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little starch, zero sugar. That's meats, vegetables, nuts, seeds, some fruit, little starch, zero sugar. So basically he's saying if you can't kill it, if you can't fish it out of the stream, if you can't pick it off a tree, dig it out of the ground, it's not food. And so it's kind of a paleo type approach, but really it's just eat real foods, avoid processed foods. So if we wanted to talk about um, my philosophy, it, it starts there. I mean, it starts with just eating the food that God intended you to eat, if that makes sense. And, and really steer clear of fast food, convenient food, processed foods. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where the paleo diet kind of blew up because I think people found that they felt better. Their blood biomarkers improved, their performance improved, their energy improved. Um, and you can really clean the inside and outside of your body through eating properly. But uh, that little hierarchy of food is probably what we do at our household. We get our meats from wild game and uh, we do buy some meats, but it's not, I don't buy beef. Hell no. I don't buy pork. You know, we eat elk, we eat fish, we eat chicken. Um, and one of the cool sayings I always heard was the less legs it has, the better. So obviously mm-hmm. fish, fish is up there, turkey, poultry. As far as vegetables go, you can get, you can't eat too many vegetables. Like no one ever got fat by eating too much vegetables at night. Um, you could eat 16 cups of spinach to equal a half a cup of ice cream. So green vegetables are your superfoods, rich in phytonutrients that are just colorful, eat a rainbow a day. And then as far as nuts and seeds, listen, fat doesn't make you fat. Uh, people are always wondering like how many fat grams should I eat a day? I'm worried about eating fat because it is higher in calories per gram. Fat, fabulous fats are what transport nutrients in your body and help you have high octane workouts. Fat is not the enemy. The enemy is sugar or carbohydrates that break down fast and, um, Without getting too nerdy, basically, you just want to avoid things that break down really fast, really simple. You don't drink your calories. Sugar is definitely something that's highly addictive, steer clear of, taper off. Um, but those are just some basic nutritional concepts that will make a huge difference in the long run. Yeah. So you know, there's you know a lot of, I, I would say, like buzzwords, keywords, diet philosophies out there in terms of like paleo or zone or going back guys would be familiar with like Atkins and all kinds of things like that to not feel like one has to follow one of those um, rigid dogmas if you will to simplify it I mean your advice is pretty much just eat real food and try to avoid anything processed I mean that's a fair assumption if we can at least all get there and begin there we're gonna be well off is that right yeah and everything we just said was requiring effort yeah um, you don't get convenience when you eat this way. There takes planning and preparing. And, uh, you know, that's why meal planning is super important. I know we probably don't have time to talk about that, but just preparing your meals for the week on Sunday, you know, being a dork and putting it in Tupperware, you could even measure your food and into the right quantities. That's kind of that zone, Dr. Atkins philosophy, but really just eating the right foods. In the at the right times throughout the day is probably just a good place to start. I would make a real small step towards just cleaning up your plate a little bit more and making it more colorful with fruits and vegetables and lean meats. Hey, Danny, is as you commented on how often do you suggest eating a day? You know, you get the people suggest a small, you know, couple hundred calories every few hours, or what's your philosophy there? Yeah, so like over fifteen years, I've I've tried just about everything, including intermittent fasting. Um, for me personally, I got to eat about every two or three hours. I don't want to eat too much in one sitting because I will feel lethargic or not have much energy and, you know, could go for, uh, I just don't feel my best. Um, but when I do eat every couple hours, um, at the right portion control, I, I have great energy levels, high octane workouts. I feel like I recover faster. I don't get shaky. And, uh, so that's my, that's what works for me. I think everybody should kind of figure out what works for them. I will say, most Americans don't eat breakfast, get super hungry, and drink way too much coffee by lunchtime, and they're starving. They eat a really huge lunch. They feel like taking a nap right after. They slug their way through the rest of their nine to five. Uh, they get home, have dinner, and then after dinner, it's just nonstop snacking. It's just a vicious cycle. So if that's you, you need to definitely eat smaller meals more frequently. Force yourself to eat breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. It is a cliche, but it's true. Get up, break the fast that you had overnight, and just put something in your belly um, and go from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for guys who are, you know, maybe making a resolution or just, you know, want to know they need to get in better shape for this upcoming upcoming hunting season, um, you know, who want to drop some weight, do you recommend things such as, you know, getting really specific in terms of like counting calories and using an app like My Fitness Pal or those types of things? Um, or just being more sensible overall and not getting, you know, too lost in the weeds of specifics. 
probably depends on your personality. Uh, someone like myself is kind of like all or none. And so I would jump off the deep end. I would weigh and measure food. I would grocery shop once a week. I would get an app. I would track macronutrients, which is protein, carbs, and fats. I would do all those things if I was just, that was my personality. And honestly, that's probably not the best way to go. Um, a more sensible way would be just to make small steps, you know, have little checkpoints along the way and just make small little steps towards your journey and little simple changes such as eating breakfast finally and bring in a snack, not buying lunch out, actually making food from home. I would start with a really small lifestyle change and build upon your momentum as it comes. That way you don't feel overwhelmed or that it's too daunting. The bottom line is if it's not currently a habit, don't expect to just make all these uh, illustrious changes in overnight. So pace yourself and try to set yourself up for long-term success by making small steps. Yeah. I think one of the things on this, you know, this whole topic, whether it be, you know, nutrition or training is I think sometimes we overthink it. Um, and in all reality, it's simple. It's just not easy. And I think as Americans, as Westerners, we expect everything to be simple and easy. And in all reality, this can be pretty simple. Eating more natural foods, eating more wholesome foods, eating more real foods and not processed foods. That's pretty simple. Like we can all figure that out. It's just not necessarily easy to be consistent with. And so that kind of goes back to what you're talking about before, which is something that I do and has helped a ton is be really strategic about, you know, meal planning, maybe cooking once a week. I mean, you mentioned the Sunday thing. That's exactly what I do is on Sundays I cook, you know, all my lunches for the whole week, um, prepare things where I can make a breakfast easily for that week. And it just makes all the difference. It's simple. It's not easy, but once you, you know, become consistent with it, it becomes easy. So on a, a little bit more advanced topic, say we have the guys who are, you know, they're already eating pretty good. They're already training some, and they just kind of want to up that a notch. Can you kind of speak to uh, the concept of nutrition for performance, getting into some of, some of the topics, um, you know, such as like the difference maybe between like a training day, non-training day diet and or some of the, um, you know, macronutrient timing in terms of like when to take protein, carbs before, or after a workout, things like that, that are a little more in the advanced size for guys who are already kind of started in this journey. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I don't bore people, but yeah. So for you next level dudes and ladies that just want to step your game up, uh, I tip my hat to you. So you think of it in the world of basically, like you said, you have your training days, you have your recovery days. I think recovery days are more important, um, especially as you get older. Uh, as far as there's two concepts, kind of meal timing, which is really important for when you're training and post-workout replenish with nutrition so let me talk about meal timing you know for the guys that gals that train in the morning you got two schools of thoughts you can wake up and go train and god bless you um i can do that sometimes um and i will say on a side note that if you are starting a workout program for 2016 please 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 try to get your workouts done in the morning you will be more successful in the long term i don't have studies to back that up i just have my own uh, anecdotal observation that I've seen people that train in the mornings don't have interruptions. They get the workout done. It's bankrolled and the day hasn't even started. Your wife hasn't asked you to go stop by the grocery store and get milk and eggs uh, and get, you know, so many things come up throughout the day. You never have really, seems like you lose control of your day when you work out in the afternoon or evening. Um, so that being said, if you are thinking about starting a fitness program, please try to do it first thing in the morning. If you want to eat before you train, that's fine. I personally don't like to have a lot in my stomach when I eat, so I usually train on an empty stomach. But if I know it's going to be a longer training session, I may crack an egg uh, and have it on a half a piece of toast or with some fresh fruit. Um, but if you're going to work out in the evening, um, before dinner, or even later after dinner, I would definitely recommend a well-balanced meal about two, two and a half hours before you train. Um, so a well-balanced meal to me is some sort of let's just say three to five ounces of a lean protein source from a dead animal, um, some sort of combination of fruits and vegetables for some carbohydrates. And if you do need something a little heavier, you could go with squash or yams as a really good, awesome 
sustaining carbohydrate and then, you know, have some good fat, cook that lean meat in olive oil or have a handful of almonds or something along with that two and a half hours before. Um, some people still feel a little shaky going into the workout. So then that's where you could go maybe 30 minute, 30 minutes out. You could do your pre-workout meal, which could be something really simple, carbohydrate based. My favorite go-to is a half a banana 30 minutes out before a workout. And then you're going, you're training, you're breaking down muscle tissues, you're working your endocrine system, your, your hormonal system, you're getting your blood pumping, you train for 20 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever. As soon as you're done, you have this metabolic window. It's like people will say it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour. I say the sooner the better. I mean, the second you put that barbell down, hop off the treadmill, go replenish your body and there's lots of studies out there that show that you should have a four to one ratio of carbohydrate to protein. I don't really know what that number is. I know what, uh, I generally try to have somewhere around 20 grams of protein and some good carbs right afterwards. Um, I like to try to eat, um, maybe that's a post workout shake. A lot of people like to do whey protein, um, by itself. That's fine. I seem to kind of like real food when I'm done working out. Maybe I'll have an apple with some peanut butter on it and then I'll drink some uh, whey protein or some branched chain amino acid powder that you put in water. But generally speaking, you want to have really like strategic meal timing so you have peak energy levels. Again, that's a balanced meal two and a half hours out. If you feel like you need a little pick-me-up, maybe have a half an apple, half a banana right before you work out and then definitely replenish as soon as you're done working out. Never, ever, ever skip eating when you're done working out even if you don't feel hungry and a lot of times when you do workouts like crossfit you don't feel like eating so you're going to have to force yourself but i promise that the restoration regeneration process happens as soon as you're done working out so you need to reward your body with that nutrition the end <laughs> yeah so so what's the the reasoning behind eating immediately after is just getting nutrients back in your body so it can absorb them yeah, so your your cells are like super hungry and stoked for some nutrition and your body will rob Peter to pay Paul. For example, you can say you trained your legs that day or whatever and your body will rob amino acids from other muscles to replenish the ones that it just broke down. So you want to, to keep all your muscle. So you want to basically refuel those glycogen levels, that stored carbohydrate in your muscles and liver. You want to refuel and get amino acids in your bloodstream so you can start the repair process. And the clock is ticking. And so mm -hmm. for me, recovery is so important because that means I can train again. And so if you want to start the recovery process, because uh, again, Folks don't realize this. You don't get your dividend while you're working out. You get it when, while you recover from you, you're working out. And so that's the first step in that process. Okay. And would that be more for building muscle or lo losing fat or both? Or Everybody should be building muscle. Everybody should be losing fat for the most part. So that okay. whole train of thought of I'm trying to do this or that. No, you're not. You're trying to be lean and strong. You need muscle and you don't need fat. So you're always trying to do both regardless of your goal. Okay. And then you mentioned, you were just rambling through, mentioned good carbs. What, what does that classify? They don't break down fast. Sugar in water just breaks down fast. Coca-Cola breaks down fast. Right. Sh so what, what is good carbs? So like f fruits and vegetables and vegetables yeah. are the best source. And then under that category – there are things like yams and uh, squash, uh, things like that that will break down in a really good clean carbohydrate and again kind of comes from the ground versus mm -hmm. you know enriched flour from bread right. and pasta and potatoes and rice. That stuff, you know, have that in moderation. I never said don't have it. I just said really, you know, Back mm -hmm. off those as much as you can and get them from the best carbohydrate sources, which is, you know, from salads and, and cooked vegetables and, and fresh fruits, you know, and, and dude, yams and squash are like my go-to. They taste so good. Um, rolled oats, things like that. Those, those are going to be super human fuel for your workouts, for your hunting, all that. Yam and, uh, and is a sweet potato considered the same thing or is that going to fall into a different category? Let's just consider it the same for 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 okay. where we're at. It's a hell of a lot better than potato, a like regular potato. Okay, yeah, I eat tons of sweet potatoes. We always have them in the house for just we like them. I didn't, I didn't know what the difference was between that and a yam. Yeah, those are definitely go to clean carbs. Okay, great. So when you talk about uh, fast and slow, or is that correlating to the glycemic index of those foods? 
Can you um, talk to that? Yeah, if you guys want to know a little bit on the glycemic index. So um, basically it's a way to measure how fast something breaks down in your stomach without anything else in your stomach. Um, and so for example, like cereal breaks down really – most cereals break down really fast. And now we're going to get next level nerd. We're going to talk about hormones. And when you have a sugar breakdown fast, your body produces insulin. Everybody needs insulin to live. Uh, if you don't create insulin, you die. Uh, if you create too much insulin or your insulin doesn't work very well, doesn't, and what insulin, I should back up. Insulin basically takes the sugar out of your bloodstream and puts it into cells. And so when you eat a meal, you increase your insulin levels. Uh, when you work out, you decrease your insulin levels. Because your cells need energy to work. But, uh, so insulin is something that you want to balance and be careful or at least cognizant of not increasing your insulin levels. You don't want to spike your insulin levels. And the fastest way to spike your insulin levels is to eat sugar or eat too much in one sitting. And that's the fat storing process. Insulin puts those sugar right into fat cells. So if you want to feed fat cells, eat a lot at once or eat a, a lot of sugar. Uh, we don't want to get fat, so we want to eat foods that break down slower. And so some people will refer to the glycemic index because it's a, a, a way to measure how fast food breaks down. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I do know that like a lot of fruit that has skin on it or nuts and seeds break down really slow, which is good, whereas a lot of simple carbs like sugar, pop, cereal, bread – break down really, really fast. So definitely check out the glycemic index if you kind of want to educate yourself on some good sources of carbohydrates. Uh, it's been out forever. Um, it's not the only tool out there, but it's something good to reference, and I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. That's cool. So you mentioned again in passing that uh, you know insulin spikes, uh, obviously associated with sugar then at that point, is actually a fat storage mechanism. And then at the same time, you mentioned how things like nuts and seeds, which are high in fat, are actually low on the glycemic index. So does that help explain then maybe some of what looks like the confusing logic and helping folks get past the idea that eating fat is going to make me fat when in all reality it's eating sugar and spiking insulin and causing that hormone response of fat storage that can actually make you fat and not eating fat. Is that correct? That's totally correct. I mean, if the, if the takeaway today is that sugar kills, sugar causes diabetes, sugar causes fat storage, yes, that is what I'm preaching. That's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that the whole fat, you know, you need to watch your fat. I waste no more energy on that. I mean, obviously there's some bad fats out there, saturated fat, um, man-made fats and trans fats, but for the most part, if you're really like worried about decreasing fat cell size, as in getting leaner, avoid sugar, avoid eating too much at two time. Check out the glycemic index chart and see which foods up there are, are ranked real high in a number and, and avoid those. You know yeah. what I mean? Like on, I remember in college, I think wheat bread has the same glycemic index rating as jelly beans. And it's actually higher than a donut. I'm pretty sure. So. Which is startling, like everybody eats a sandwich a day. So if you just kind of cut out bread and pasta and literally replace that with a rainbow a day of fruits and vegetables, I guarantee you're going to see better workouts. I guarantee you're going to like the way you look in the mirror, the way you feel, and the way you perform. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. It's good to because it's you know it's opposite of what the the popular thought has been for so long. I think, and obviously, I think that tide is changing. Um, but it's 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 good to know that for sure. So after well, let let's do this real quick before we get off topic. I know that there's going to be some questions and then some guys who face the struggle as they try to eat better. Of you know, we talked about how this isn't necessarily convenient. At least unless you know, unless you're pre planning, it's not convenient at all for sure. But on the convenience end of things, what are some of your go to options when you're on the run, when you haven't had the opportunity to pre-plan a meal or a snack, what are some of the safer things that you can turn to as a convenient snack um, that are easier to find without, you know, pre-planning a meal and things like that? Yeah. So like at my desk at work, I always have a bag of like non-salted roasted almonds. Uh, seems like I always have an apple within an arm's reach. 
And I just pair those two together with maybe some slices of deli meat or something just for a quick go-to. If you ask my wife, she would tell you I always have a smoothie every day as like my mid-morning snack. And I can – I'm not a huge vegetable lover to be honest with you. But um, one of my favorite go-to smoothies and, – and this is just my deal is I loved like about a cup of frozen blueberries, a couple ice cubes. And I actually freeze bags of spinach in my freezer and I can put like three cups of spinach in that smoothie, um, a little bit of peanut butter, water, milk, what have you, and then a scoop of your protein powder. In this instance, I would use, um, there's a company called Mountain Ops. They make this stuff called Ammo and I recommend that because look that stuff up. It's got the best ingredients out of any meal replacement I've ever found, including no artificial sweeteners. Um, that's an unsolicited like plug. I'm just telling you like it's good. Blend that up and oh my goodness, you got yourself, you just had three cups of spinach and it didn't taste like spinach. It tastes like blueberries, frozen blueberries. It was delicious. So um, mm. I make smoothies, you know, at least once a day for a quick convenient because it takes like three minutes to do. And the amount of servings of fruits and vegetables is, is unparalleled for a quick convenient. And that's what I do at home. And then I do the apple, almond, turkey slices or whatever uh, at the office when I'm on the go. So, yeah. How many calories do you eat in a day, Dan? Don't know. Don't care. Um, <laughs> just seriously, I eat every three hours and try to have um, – I don't check my body fat. I don't uh, – I hardly ever weigh on the scale. I don't – I do know this. When I was a personal trainer in my early 20s, I was, I was doing bodybuilding isolation movements, which are totally cool if you, that's what you do. That's not what I do currently. And I'd walk around probably at 15 to 18% body fat. I looked kind of good with a shirt um, on. I'd look kind of like I filled out a t-shirt and I was strong. I wasn't as fit. And over the years doing CrossFit and just blurring the distinction between training with weights and cardio and the high intensity, I cannot even – like it is really hard for me to weigh over 160. And I'm not a tall guy. I think most people know I'm like 5'7". But I – I probably weigh 155. I'm definitely under 10% body fat. I don't do quote unquote cardio. I don't count calories. I eat clean and I train my ass off. And the results speak for themselves. As far as hunting season goes, dude, I, I literally come out of September in the high 140s. And it's kind of depressing. I mean, wow. but I can, I can hike like a mother, but you know what I mean? So, um, when I get back from hunting season, I truly try to kind of step up my calories a little bit. And the ways I do that is instead of having water in my smoothie, I'll put some whole milk or raw milk in there. Um, and I'll just probably up my ounces of servings of lean meat and, and just eat a few more, you know, meals throughout the day. But, um, don't count calories. I would, if you were going to count something, I would pay attention to your total grams of carbohydrates, your total grams of sugar in a day and probably manage that, that would be a better approach, uh, for the long term. Mm -hmm. Um, and then basically manipulate your food intake based on how you feel. Are you, are you hungry right after you ate? Did you feel a drop in your performance? Did you feel sluggish or shaky? Eat more throughout the day and spread it out. But if you are going to geek out, track your calories, I guess that's fine, but really track your carbohydrate intake and specifically from sugar. Hmm. So what are some general um, numbers if, if somebody is uh, tracking those carbohydrates? What are some of the, you know, the ranges to kind of try and stay in? Um, you know, if okay. you want, maybe want to lose weight versus obviously, you know, you do need um, more car carbohydrate the harder you're training to some extent. So that kind of goes back to the on and off training days. But what are some of the numbers to shoot for for somebody who wants to track those things? Okay. Well, there's a lot of guys that in the bodybuilding world do carb cycling. And the dumbed down version is that they, depending on a training day or a non-training day, your carbohydrate intake will influx. And so, for instance, if it's a training day, you'll have obviously more carbohydrates. And on a non-training day, you'll take in less because there's no need for that extra energy. Um, that's you might want to look into that if you're um like we talked about earlier going to that next level geek geek mode you might want to look at carb cycling i don't look at that at all to be honest with you um for carbohydrates i don't even know my total grams of carbs a day um i try 
at every meal to have at least 20 to 25 grams of clean carbohydrates. And it's really not that hard to get carbohydrates. It's actually harder to get protein at your meals. You'll find that real quick. Um, so if you eat six meals a day, that's 150 grams of carb or carbohydrates total. Another thing that people do is they kind of taper their carbohydrates throughout the day. So for example, they will probably eat if they're going to have any like heavier carbohydrates like yams, potatoes, rices, they'll have those in the first half of the day. And in the back half of the day, as their activity levels go down, they will backfill with more fruits and vegetables. So the theory there is that you're eating more energy rich carbohydrates, but you're using that fuel. And as the day goes on, you're kind of slowing that down. Um, so I don't know if I want to throw out a number for everybody. Everybody's different. I would say, just pay attention more to quality versus quantity when you're starting out. And then if you hit a dead end or start to plateau, then you can start to break down your numbers from there. Yeah. I, based on my own spirit experience, I would say that getting to what you said, like 150, and I've done even done periods where I was like under 100, um, it, which is massively different than I think, you know, the standard diet. And for guys who are aren't necessarily eating clean and haven't paid attention, you'd probably be surprised to find that your carbohydrate levels are in the two, sometimes three hundreds. Um, just because again, even from sources you wouldn't think of, um, and some of the sources that aren't considered bad, but like we talked about earlier, wheat bread, you have a sandwich with a couple pieces of wheat bread, or maybe a guy who, you know, eats cereal for breakfast or, you know, some sort of bar and you start adding that up and it's, it's easy to have your carb levels quite high. For sure. Absolutely. So you mentioned earlier mountain ops and not talking about that specifically, but I did want to bring up the point and, and you kind of mentioned this up front, you know, most guys want to talk about training. They want to talk about specific lifts and then they want to talk about supplements and things like that. And then nutrition's like maybe super on the back burner. We're kind of flipping that upside down saying nutrition is super important, but what role, um, does supplementation play? Um, you know, I, again, from my own experience, I don't think supplementation much like training can necessarily make up for a horrible diet. But in the end, the word supplementation is you're supplementing something you're adding to something. Um, in this case, uh, hopefully a good nutrition plan that's already going well. So what role should supplementation play? Um, once somebody starts to clean up their diet. Right on. Um, well, if you get to know me, I always I speak my mind, and it hurts me sometimes, but I'll be the first one to tell everybody, hey, guess what? The supplement industry is a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar industry because people are lazy and are looking for quick fixes. And um, I sell supplements at my box, and uh, they're fine, and I take supplements, but there are no shortcuts. It's comes down to two things, hard work and consistency. And when I say consistency, I mean like continuity over time. It's okay to miss a workout. It's not okay to miss three weeks. It's okay to shoot your bow once a week, but it's not okay to let your bow sit in the bow case until August. You see what I'm saying? Like, So if you're looking for results, you need to bust your ass in the gym, work extremely hard with the time that you have, and you need to be consistent, have continuity 365 over the year. You know what I mean? If you cheat on a mill, that's fine. Get right back on the wagon your next mill. Don't just be like, screw it. The rest of the day I'm cheating. I'm going to Dairy Queen three times. Mm, you know what I mean? Suits. So <laughs> I just wanted to, to get that out there and say that, hey, the supplement is a very lucrative business because people are soft and they're looking for shortcuts. And I always like to parallel anything fitness with hunting. There are no shortcuts for guys like us that bow hunt on public land with a bow, I mean, a bow in itself, there's, there's your first disadvantage. And now you're competing with other hunters. And I know you guys kind of experienced this as much as I have is, dude, there is like compared to 15 years ago, there's just more competition in the public land hunting realm. It's just, it is what it is. And so if you want to separate yourself, you have to work harder and be more consistent at scouting, shooting and researching. So all that rant was to say that, Hey, supplements, when people ask me about supplements and check my Facebook and, uh, message inbox it's full of questions i've never i still haven't gotten to people but it drives me nuts like uh they're not a magic pill they they aren't going to do anything that's like oh i'm going to start this my mountain ops 
cycle of 21 days, well, good for you. I hope that helps. I hope it placebos you into thinking you're doing all these great things. But the bottom line is it starts with really good nutrition, really smart, intelligent training and recovering. Now, if you want to talk about you've gotten past that point and you're looking at really getting supplements to take you to another level, then they can come in and then you can really look at what supplements are out there that help you with recovery. Um, that's what I like talking about. And so branch chain amino acids are probably the number one supplement I recommend to people besides a multivitamin. If you struggle to eat lots of variety of fruits and vegetables throughout the day, then you need to take a daily multivitamin. It's not hurting anything. You just need to supplement that. Like you said, you're supplementing what you didn't get from food. Um, and then branch chain amino acids, those are four amino acids, um, I'm sorry, three amino acids, and they are isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Nobody cares. But BCAAs are really important to get into your bloodstream right when you're done working out. And so a lot of the whey proteins out there that you have a scoop of will be, say, on the label, they have X amount of BCAAs. That's good. So I would say start with that, and that immediately gets the ball rolling towards awesome recovery. Um, I mentioned earlier, like the ammo I take from Mountain Ops is really high quality, good nutrition to supplement into my smoothie. Um, I don't believe in fat loss pills too much. I don't believe in, um, believe it or not, pre workout stuff. There's a whole long backstory on pre workouts. I could tell you another time, but there's some dangerous pre workout stuff out there. So you need to guard yourself and be careful. You know, um, there's some stuff that I have taken in the past that I don't think I would ever take again, but there's some really good pre-workout stuff out there as well. And all those do is maybe help you have a little more energy and a little more focus while you're working out. Um, in the field, there's some stuff you can take as well. Um, I used to be um, with Wilderness Athlete, and I took their Hydrate and Recover, and I still swear to this day it's one of the best items out there you can take for recovering, put it in your water while you're hunting, um, so there's a lot of really good supplements out there, but there's way more crappy supplements that are just you, – you're just pissing money down the toilet. So f I always say like put your shirt on first, then your tie, and the tie being supplements. If you don't have your shirt on, which is really good nutrition and intelligent training, uh, who cares about the tie? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the tie is is good supplements, stuff that's going to help you recover faster between workouts and feel better does that make sense yeah absolutely Perfect. so certainly spend you know 60 bucks on cleaning up your diet and your grocery shopping before you spend 60 bucks on supplements every month absolutely yeah so while we're on this whole you know rant of non-sexy topics and haven't talked about lifts <laughs> and we haven't talked about the big flashy things to get in shape for elk hunting season let's continue with one more but i think it's important could you speak to, um, again, from some of your uh, education background, obviously your experience, you know, this whole topic of nutrition, um, I think is much more important than just being better hunters, although that's a huge motivating factor for me personally. I think it's more important than, you know, looking decent in a t-shirt or at the beach or whatever, although that's great. Could you kind of speak to what I think our society is kind of beginning to see and that a lot of our problems, um, diseases, things like that are somewhat self-induced based on our nutrition and diet choices. Is that accurate from your perspective? Yeah. I mean, philosophically speaking, I think food is a drug. I think food is medicine and that's totally uh, contrary to most people's belief that when you're sick, you go to the doctor and you get prescribed a pill and you go to the pharmacy and pick up your medicine. Your medicine is in your food first and foremost. And um, that's that's kind of like in our ancestry. That's how we evolved was through our food. And so food is a drug and it's potent. And when you start to think about that versus just what tastes good, and but you're actually putting the right medicine drugs into your body from your food, it changes your mindset everything you eat breaks down and becomes part of all your millions of cells in your body. And so nutrition is really important. I guess if I ended it, just remember that food, food is medicine and you can decide, you know, the proper dosages and, and you can dictate how well you feel and how well you perform by what you put in your body. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, before we close, Dan, where can uh, our listeners learn more about you, follow uh, your hunts, stay up to date with you on social media, things like that. 
Um, yeah, so uh, I have a website called elkshape.com that mainly serves as my training journal where I just kind of keep myself accountable and, and put out what I do for workouts. Um, no surprise, I do CrossFit. So if you're looking for workout ideas, you can try what I do and you may love it, love to hate it or think it's stupid. That's cool. Um, I do put a lot of energy into my YouTube channel, Elk Shape. And try to keep fresh content on there. So check that out or subscribe. And then, um, not a huge Facebook dude, but I love Instagram. So, um, I'm always looking for good people to follow there. Um, at Dan the Fitness Man on Instagram. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Dan. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, guys. All right, that's a wrap, guys. Once again, go ahead and follow us on Instagram this week as we head to the ATA show. As always, you can also learn more at exomountaingear.com. Uh, forward slash podcast or specifically for this episode you can get the show notes at exomountaingear.com forward slash 20 that's two zero we will catch you next time